Good morning. It's Lisa with Lisa Heal Yourself. And what I want to start out by saying is that disease is not a mistake. Now, I'm not a doctor, but this is what I believe after being through a massive healing journey. They always say that the healing journey is a journey and you discover all these truths along the way. You discover things about yourself along the way. And that's what I'm here to share with you. Disease is not a mistake. Your body does not make mistakes like this, okay? So although it's painful, yes. Although the symptoms are out of control, yes. Although it's scary, although uh, you may be crippled in many different ways, this isn't a mistake. And once you realize that it's not a mistake and that it's actually, there's a purpose, healing hurts but the healing phase is necessary to go through. Let's just talk about illness for a second. What is illness? You have a set or a series of symptoms. You feel tired, run down, exhausted. You may have things like cramps or headaches or your bones hurt or your muscles hurt or you have skin rashes. Your organs aren't working properly. There's many different parts of your body that you feel like are failing you. And this is the fundamental mistake that we make we feel like our body's against us and it has gotten a disease it has gotten an illness it's either caught a virus or a bug or somehow it's degenerating slowly caught an autoimmune disease right it's against us it's fighting against us it's attacking our own body whatever it is is basically pro proliferating and trying to attack us and bring us down and take over the human organism, sorry, hang on. Which is simply the wrong way to look at it. Our bodies don't attack us, right? Viruses don't try to take over. Fungus, bacteria, um, autoimmune diseases, like our body does not attack itself. This is, the way that we look at it is filled and fueled with fear. Evolutionarily speaking, your body is adapting and changing to the the biological factors around it and that could be through something physical in your environment or a thought in your mind and your body is reacting to threats you're always 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 going back to your primitive role and this is this is what I teach this is what I teach in my course this is what I teach fundamentally this is what I believe is that your body is always either in fight or flight or rest and repair. Something usually happens, it's always got to do with trauma. An unexpected trauma or conflict in your life that you just, takes you by surprise, you didn't, it changes you fundamentally as a person. You just can't at that moment digest the whole thing and process it and complete the, the, the process for whatever reason, okay? So maybe you had an accident, maybe you were abused, uh, emotionally or physically maybe there was some sort of a childhood trauma like that maybe there was a medical injury or medical trauma something happened a death a divorce the loss of someone close to you the loss of a best friend the loss of a spouse the loss of a boyfriend it doesn't have to be a death a breakup um, a breakdown of a friendship something happens that takes you by surprise it's not an expected stress it's not something that you've planned for like Stress on an ongoing basis, you know, like our to-do list, or we have a lot going on in a month, or, you know, we're gonna move houses, or we have a lot going on at work. These are kind of more like expect, ex expected stresses. We know they're coming. This isn't usually what leads to trauma. Trauma is something that happens that was unexpected and it fundamentally changes us as a person. It makes us less trusting. If we hold this grief or this anger or this, this, these feelings inside because we can't make sense of them at the time. And that's usually what trauma is, right? We can't make sense. We can't process these feelings. Um, it's a shock to our system. Something shocked our system in a way that fundamentally changes us and that's called trauma. And so usually every illness is preceded by a trauma, whether it's something that you recognize or something that's subconscious. But there was a trauma there, some sort of a shock to the body, to the system, that took us out of this normal rhythm. Sympathetic system during the day, you know, we're sort of activated, we're moving around, and then at night we fall into the parasympathetic mode, and it's sort of this nice little 
little graph that goes and we're, we're going along normally. A trauma happens, we don't know how to process it. It's a shock to our system. We cannot figure it out and our mind gets latched onto the problem of this trauma. Like, you know, how do I, how, how, how am I gonna pay my bills? Or how am I going to get my uh, husband back? Or how am I gonna get over the death of my mom? Or, or what about this accident that just happened to me? And our mind latches onto a problem. Our mind latches onto the feelings, the emotions. Our mind latches onto what's happening. And we completely go into fight or flight mode. So we completely constantly go into this sympathetic dominant state where we are activating our central nervous system in a way that we're scanning our environment, we're scanning our emotions, we're ready for a fight, we're on guard, we don't know if we need to run, fight or freeze, and we are ready, we're on guard. And this is how we stay stuck in this mode with trauma, we sort of never settle back down. We stay in this ongoing trauma or stress response is what I call it and we're activated or we're nearly activated all the time as our mind latches on this is when the monkey mind goes crazy we desperately try to solve a problem and that's our brain just trying to keep us alive and safe when we're in an activated ongoing fight or flight response that doesn't really turn off um, this is where our body's breaking down this is where illnesses are created our body starts to to break down in order to help us survive it starts to build up certain tissues or take certain tissues away. It starts to, to adapt, adapt to this ongoing stress and figure out what it can do to, in response to this ongoing stress that you're constantly feeling to help you survive. So it's working for you. And this is the state where diseases are created. It's normally not the state where we feel the intensity of the illness though. Usually once we resolve this conflict and we resolve this trauma uh, this is the point where our body takes this big sigh of relief like oh, okay we're out of danger we're out of conflict okay right like I'm just gonna take a minute here I need a minute and gets that sigh of relief that's when your body says okay now it's time to heal now it's time to heal this damage that happened during the, the phase of the active trauma of this active conflict now it's time to heal it. And healing hurts. So people get very confused, right? Healing can hurt. So let's just, let's take an analogy of working out, okay? So you're running, you're doing all these squats and heavy lifts. You're doing a big, huge aerobic exercise. Um, you are pushing your muscles and you are in a sympathetic fight or flight state. You're very activated. Um, and you don't normally notice your sore muscles. Yeah, yeah, it hurts a bit here and there. You can feel something happening, but it's not until you go to bed, you sort of calm down your system. You wake up the next morning and your muscles hurt. They ache, maybe you can't even walk, right? You can barely sit. This is where the strain happens. So in the actual healing phase, which doesn't make sense, is where the pain comes in, or the fatigue comes in, where the like, I don't think I can, can handle this amount of pain and stress on my body. Something must be wrong with it. After you've, work, after you've worked out, um, the messengers in your body are sending messengers. It's sending cells. It's sending blood. It's sending uh, inflammation to the sites to heal them. So inflammation is actually healing. But you, if you didn't know any different, and everybody knows this is the case with exercise because we have you know, people to tell us, people to calm us down, people to say, oh yeah, it'll hurt for a couple of days and then it'll go away. And you don't panic. What happens though, when you come out of this major trauma, it's a major tra trauma that's gone on in your life and you've been activated for a long time over something. When you finally settle and you start to heal, we don't really equate that. And we don't think this is a response, much like the healing that goes on after exercise. Um, and my body is sending, uh, messengers, cells, blood to the site to, to create inflammation so that I can heal, right? Because we don't equate it. We only say, oh, well, I didn't do any physical thing to it. So why is it hurting? 
but we don't realize that the emotional response, the emotional messages that we have inside, um, our body's taking cues from that as well. So if we are constantly feeling emotionally attacked, judged, criticized, like under threat, our body is still gonna be making the same messenger cells go to your bodies, you know, to help it, to basically help it heal after the trauma of the incident, whether it's emotional or physical. So let's talk about what we believe as a society illness actually is, disease illness is. Usually we think about, first of all, uh, bacteria and viral infections as germs that somehow <clears throat> are carried around, get into our system and mount an attack on us. And we must mount an attack on them to kill the germs and to bring our body back to homeostasis. So that's, you know, one thing that we believe. The next thing that we believe is like cancer and heart disease and strokes, right? We believe that somehow for cancer, um, our cells are just going rogue and multiplying, right? Multiplying bad cells that want to now take over our body and destroy us, right? Or in the case of autoimmune dis disease, where we think that our immune system is attacking itself. Our own body is attacking and turning on itself because it doesn't recognize the tissues as being safe and therefore it wants to mount a response on them to, to kill them, thinking that it's something that it's not, right? So we have a lot of misconceptions about what disease and illness actually are, that these cells are not doing what they're supposed to be doing right that they are mounting an attack on us or randomly multiplying or taking over and going rogue and not like these cells are intelligent i want you to know that if a cell attacks something it's doing it for a reason it's not attacking your healthy tissue um for anything other than a really good reason if you break your bone say you break your leg your body is going to send all kinds of inflammation cells there and it is going to hurt like crazy. And as the healing process happens, your body is going to send all kinds of things there to build that bone up and that's going to be painful. So your body's not attacking that bone as you might think if you didn't know that the body was literally sending things there to help the bone heal, fuse together, mend and become stronger than it was in the first place because that's what the body does. It's, it makes things stronger in the end when it heals them. It's going to, to make the, that bone even stronger after it heals it, but it's gonna hurt. And so your body's not attacking itself as it's healing a bone, just like it's not attacking itself as it's healing, you know, migraine headaches, or if it's healing your cancer, or if it's healing a lung disease. Your cells are brilliant disease is not a mistake okay it's mislabeled disease is mislabeled pain is mislabeled as a disease that's meant to take you out when it's a really a process it's really a process designed to save your life to either kill the cells that shouldn't be there or help the cells heal that need to be built back up again and this process often hurts just like when you have a germ or you're going through a virus and you get a fever that huge painful um, body aches and chills and fever that comes on is not your body turning against you it's not your body body's way of saying I'm giving up on you I'm not I'm not gonna help you or this this virus is too strong for me and look what it's doing to me this is your body that's your body right that fever is your body doing that your cells are mounting a response on the virus to heat it up and kill it, right? The aches and chills are, are signs that your body wants to send different messengers to all these different bones and blood cells and fluid. It's, it's redistributing it all over your body in order to help to kill the viruses, right? So it's often not the virus itself that's making you feel terrible. It's your own body and it's not because it's against you. It's to help you, but it hurts. And if we misinterpret the signals and we get scared and we let fear really come in, then what happens is we create another conflict, a new trauma, right? 
now we believe our bodies against us. We're not good enough. We're not strong enough. We're failures. We're, we're being attacked and we feel mo even more on guard. Our body goes back into this sympathetic mode instead of healing mode. And now it is crossing over from sympathetic to parasympathetic. It's sort of wildly out of control because you keep introducing these new conflicts, these new fears, these new traumatic experiences that you, you can't process and you can't get through. And that's when we create chronic illness and chronic disease because it's an ongoing stress response. It's a malfunctioning, ongoing stress response that's not, that's broken down. We don't have our natural rhythm. If we're not getting into parasympathetic mode, we can't get into the healing. When we're afraid of how the fe healing feels, we activate our fear response. We activate this sympathetic mode again and we're in this constant circular going round and round and we this is where chronic disease sets in. It's just our body's pattern and our body's reaction to this ongoing stress that's really broken down and is really the problem and is really the thing that needs to be healed, right? It's our thoughts, it's our emotions, it's our feelings and our experiences about what is happening to us that are contributing to the trauma, that are contributing to this circular pattern that we're in. So a lot of times we just look at the facts in, in modern medicine. We look at the disease or the virus or the bacteria or the condition, the part of the body, the symptoms, and we look at it and say, oh, this has responded to this, so you should try this protocol, or you should try this medicine, or you should do this, or this is what's gonna happen. We've seen this before in the body, and uh, these are the studies and the tests that we've, you know, we've decided that this works and you should follow this. But half or more than half of the equation is how you feel about that, how you feel about the experience that's happening to you, how you feel internally, how you're experiencing what it's like to be you going through this. And that's the part that gets missed. That's the part that doctors don't look at. Even natural health practitioners often don't look at. We're missing a huge piece and that's your experience, your thoughts, your feelings, your thinking, your emotions that are literally controlling your nervous system consciously and subconsciously in a huge way, in a bigger way than anything. And so when we ignore how we feel about something, what our gut instincts are telling us, what are emotions, what emotions are, are we denying or suppressing or rejecting or turning away from or stuffing down or afraid to feel or we can't talk about it or we can't make sense of it or we can't process. When our emotions not being looked at with disease, then we are missing what's happening. So I believe that doctors and practitioners and even a lot of um, healthy protocols, because I followed a lot for a long time of like supplement and diet and different protocols and oh my gosh, everything, like you name it, right? Ozone therapy and hyperbaric oxygen tanks and it could, the list goes on and on. And so I believe that disease is not a malfunction. It's not an error. It's not your body breaking down or going against you or trying to harm you or kill you. I believe that your body is perfect, that your body's working for you, that these processes happening, that are happening in your body are adaptations, physical adaptations created to help you survive, to help you survive. For the longest time, I believed that my body was against me. I believed that my body was broken. I believed that the diseases were, my body was breaking down and decaying into death, but really I'm alive and everything that happened to my body, all the 200 symptoms I believe now were my body's attempt to heal me. It hurt, it was painful. I, I really had some poisoning. I had mitochondrial defects, cell defects. I feel like my cellular structure was broken and compromised. And I believe that it was super painful to heal all that, right? My brain had to heal, my body had to heal, my bones, my blood, my cells, my organs, all had to heal from the inside out. And that caused so many symptoms, but it wasn't my body attacking me. You can trust your body. Your body is trying to heal you. Support it, trust it, and keep reminding yourself 
to breathe deep, to allow the healing to happen, and to keep your conflicts low, keep your trauma low, resolve your trauma, resolve that ongoing trauma, resolve your emotional conflicts, right, as well as your physical conflicts, all, everything deep down, your emotions that need to be heard, hear them, feel them, and remind yourself that you are safe. You can trust your body. And so I hope this video was helpful. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. And I will see you in the next video.